welcome to our first event in the Argenta Film Series. Our goal with the Argenta Film Series is to bring the, the same kind of world-class programming that we've had in our flagship event, the Little Rock Film Festival, each June. Uh, to a year-round event here at the um, ACT Theater in Argenta. And um, half of our events will be local events um, curated by David Folks, and half of them will be national and international events uh, curated by Levi Agee. And um, our partner in this will be the Argenta Arts Foundation, and um, here to say a few words is John Gadan. Thank you, Brent. Well, thank all of you for coming out tonight. Um, the Ar Argenta Arts Foundation is a local arts agency, and part of our group is the Friends of the Arts, about 50 people who uh, go well beyond uh, the normal giving uh, just to see great programming like this in Argenta. So thank you to all the Friends of the Arts that are here tonight. Some of our sponsors uh, tonight are the Mitchell Williams Law Firm. Uh, they have a great program called Take Time to Give, and uh, they, they've been really involved in the Argenta community. So Harry and the group from uh, Mitchell, thank you guys so much. Scott with the Baker House. <laughs> Scott Miller with Baker House B&B. And of course, uh, Judy and Vince with Argenta Community Theater. We're real excited about this opportunity to work with the uh, Little Rock Film Festival and the Renault Brothers. Uh, they're renowned filmmakers, and the, uh, the, the product that's going to be coming out of Arkansas in the next five or six years is just really incredible. Uh, if any of you get a chance to see Jeff Nichols' new film, which was uh, debuted last night, was really terrific. And he's doing another film he's filming in southern Arkansas, and I'm sure Brent will tell you a little bit more about that. But we're real excited, and the mission of our arts agency is to bring great programming like this to Central Arkansas to support the arts in the creative corridor between Little Rock and North Little Rock. So we're excited to debut this new film series and thank you guys for being here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the events that we already have planned uh, coming up for the uh, fall and the winter. And I'm pretty much going to read these. My brother sent me them, so hopefully these sounds okay. Um, our next event is on October 7th, and it's going to be Marathon Boy. Director Gemma Atwal will be in Little Rock from London to discuss the film Marathon Boy about a three-year-old marathon runner from, um, from India. The film will air on HBO later this year, so we're really excited to have her here. Uh, Robert Wallen, three-time Emmy Award-nominated uh, actor, has acted alongside greats like Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, and Robert Redford, worked with directors like Woody Allen, before they became a household name. He's currently starring in the new TV Land sitcom, Happily Divorced. He will be here giving a workshop about acting and directing. Uh, in December, we will be showing Kasim the Dream. Kasim the Dream tells the powerful story of a child soldier from Uganda who was kidnapped by a rebel army and forced to commit war atrocities and then went on to become a professional boxer in the United States. In the doc documentary, Kasim fights Jermaine Taylor in Little Rock and Jermaine Taylor will be here to participate in a Q&A with Kasim following the screening. Uh, also in October, we have a uh, special fundraiser for uh, Feed a Soldiers. And this uh, Feed a Soldier centers around the short film, The Unknown Citizen, filmed in Little Rock, which reenacts a simple gesture of anonymously giving back to our military personnel and veterans. Director Neil Awesome will discuss how he hopes Feed a Soldier will grow from a local grassroots effort to a national movement. We're really excited to show the film Bellflower, official selection at Sundance and South by Southwest. Bell, uh, Bellflower follows two friends who spend all of their free time building flamethrowers and weapons of mass destruction in hopes that a global apocalypse will occur. <laughs> Just like us, the documentary features Arab American comedians as they set out on a four country comedy tour of the Middle East showing that laughter is the common language of the world and can uh, build cultural bridges of tolerance, understanding, and acceptance. And that film is made by an Arkansas director now living in New York. Uh, the Argenta film series will also go outdoors with a family friendly screening to be announced on Facebook and decided by popular vote. So with all that, um, I'd also like to, uh, today I was talking to Lindsey Miller. He was uh, doing a, a story uh, about all the things that we're doing here, the Real Civil Rights Film Festival. Uh, we also want to announce our um, 
I got to get this name exactly right. Justin Nichols is starting a new horror film festival in Little Rock. And it is called the Little Rock. What is it called? Do you know what it's called, Levy? <laughs> he told me to get this right because he thinks it's really clever. No, it is the. Uh, The Little Rock Horror Picture Show will start in February. <laughs> and that's going to be curated by uh, Justin Nichols. Uh, we also have the Real Civil Rights Film Festival. It's going to be curated uh, by Spirit Tricky. Um, this is all part of our, our further year-round programming that we're really working hard here. And uh, like I was saying, uh, Lindsay Miller was, was talking to me today about all the things that we're doing here, and he asked me, you know, I was telling him I was just in Mexico and I got to be in India next week and, you know, we're on the road six months a year. And he said, you know, how do you guys do all this? How do you do all this programming? And what I told him is that the Little Rock Film Festival is really a collective of people working together. And uh, uh, these people, they all have full-time jobs like I do. And they spend a lot of time making this happen. And I, I'd like to recognize them if they could all stand up. Angie Stouffer, Levi Ag. Jeff Fuel, Justin Nichols, Mallory O'Neill, Amon Abbasi, Mike, Lever, uh, Mike Ledford, and Mike Poe. <laughs> all these guys treat this like our full-time job, but they're all volunteers so that all of our money can go back into programming. So we really appreciate all their efforts, and thank you very much. So anyway, on tonight's programming. Uh, tonight we're showing Foot Soldier, Pillow, and The Orderly. These were all our uh, prize winners at this year's Little Rock Film Festival. All of them have gone on to, to show a lot around the country and to war, uh, win awards around the country. And each of them is working on a feature film at the time, uh, uh, now, uh, which is what Graham Gordy, a screenwriter, is going to be up here to talk to them about after the screenings. So please enjoy these great three films, Foot Soldier, Pillow, and then The Orderly. Thank you. We're really excited that screenwriter Graham Gordy has agreed to uh, hold the discussion with these filmmakers. Each of them are working on feature films, which I think is really important because this is where the, the local uh, filmmaking scene is right now, where we're going for these really high quality short films into the feature films, and that's really what we wanted to talk about tonight. So Graham Gordy is going to come up right now. We got John Crawford. He's here from uh, LA. He agreed to come here tonight. Daniel Campbell and also the Miller Brothers we're going to have up here. We're just waiting on uh, uh, Miles and, and Josh who are coming in the back. But in the meantime, um, so uh, you guys both chose that Pecan Grove in Scott. <laughs> Which is a great place to shoot a film. It's apparently our only attractive stretch of road in central Arkansas. So. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually a good choice. Hey, man. How are you? Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. So, so um, these are three uh, very beautiful and very singular uh, films. And um, see, I, I, I just want to start off a little bit talking about inspiration and uh, you know what what I mean. John uh, Foot Soldier is sort of. Flannery O'Connor with some redemption <laughs> in the form of a drag queen and foot cream. And uh, so, but tell us a little bit about that and how that came about. Sure. Um, well, uh, Foot Soldier was my second year film at UCLA for graduate school. And um, I had gone to Hendricks College here and studied literature. So, noted the, the Flannery O'Connor tone of Wise Blood, which was a big inspiration. But um, I also wanted to come back and make a movie in Arkansas. I'd, done my other two shorts in LA and it wasn't as inspiring as the South. So I wanted to come here and work with local talent and what I really uh, 
found to be the best part of coming back was just how many people uh, reached out and made, helped make the film. Like Gabe Mahan, who wasn't able to shoot the film because of uh, a school rule, uh, it helped with all the equipment and was AC on the film. And he's also the DP of both of their projects. And he's a big part of kind of the Arkansas independent scene. Um, so it was really just kind of fulfilling to come back and have so much help on the film. And all the actors are local talent. Dustin Alford, who's uh, Emmett, the lead in the film, works at KRK. I don't think he could be here tonight, but um, he's a very talented guy. And so it was just amazing how much talent was around. So I first want to say thank you to that. But yeah, it came mostly from, I was a I was a door-to-door -door salesman in college to try to pay some of the bills. And uh, also I was a big fan of Flannery O'Connor. So it was a little bit of both those things that made this film. And uh, in terms of films that inspired as well, what, what uh, you know, I mean, e even if, if they didn't sort of inspire directly, what, what did you try to emulate with this? Um, a, a big film that I watched that I really fell in love with was uh, Norfolk, which I don't know if anybody's seen Norfolk, but it's um, a Polish brother film, I think. And uh, the, a lot of the tone came from Norfolk and the kind of heightened realism came from Norfolk. But I'm also a big fan of uh, the Coen brothers, as I think everybody is. And, uh, this, and secondly, just a lot of the literature, a lot of Southern Gothic literature was um, kind of steeped in the film. But even Foot Sold, uh, even, sorry, Wise Blood, the movie, uh, it was also very helpful in making the film. And uh, Miles and Josh, you guys, in terms of redemption, kind of went the other way. I mean, you cut off the wings of an angel. So, uh, and for Mama. So, uh, so can you talk a little bit about re your relationship with your mother? <laughs> um, <laughs> is, is Mom here? Mom in the audience? Okay. This is a, a pure story of fiction. We, our mother did not live on the second floor. Okay, right, right, good, good, good. Um, no, but uh, in terms of inspiration, what you, I mean, because one thing that strikes me, as I said, about each one of these things is they are extremely singular, rare, and interesting films. And so what, what was it about, uh, what inspired you to, uh, to make this film? Well, uh, the uh, initial inspiration just came one day I was fishing and, you know, casting the line, and I was like, I could catch an angel. And then from there, I, was, I always make notes, and I keep a pad or paper with me and write constantly. And I was just trying to make something a little different mm -hmm. or write something a little different, of course, inspired by Southern Gothic and uh, Mice and Men, yeah. you know, and, uh, and our relationship as, as, as a family unit. <laughs> and uh, it just, it Do just, Dr. It just, Dr. Freud was carried out on a stretcher. So it, just, it descended from there. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, in terms of, well, we had been producing uh, a part. <laughs> Shut up, Daniel. A part and uh, together on Daniel's first uh, short, Antiquities, and uh, we had decided we wanted to shoot something. We wanted to write and direct something, and uh, so we had a bunch of ideas that we had come up with. And then when Miles pitched that idea was like this, there's no question we've got to do this. Um, and in terms of kind of the look of the film, I mean, we were inspired by Sergio Leone's uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Like the first 10 minutes of that film is so beautiful. Um, and we just thought it'd be interesting to do kind of a Southern Gothic film um, that looked like a spaghetti Western, so. That's cool. And we thought it'd be cheap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and Daniel, what about, what about you in terms of uh, what, what brought this about and then also sort of what films inspired you? Um, I was taking a, we were going to, for Antiquities, we were, we were at a, headed towards Oklahoma for a film festival and I was, uh, I was with the two guys that were actually playing the two crazies in the back and all three of us were on the sugar highs from way too many Skittles from all the gas stations we were stopping at. And, and so there wasn't a time where it was quiet in the car. And every Skittles king size? King size yeah. Skittles, yeah, yeah. And, and so we, uh, it was just too much going on in the vehicle, and um, it seemed like it'd rotate. There'd be two people going crazy and one person sane, and it just kept rotating. I thought, man, we should, we, all three were thinking we should make a movie, and that's where it came from. Um, but inspiration, uh, Paper Moon probably more than anything on this, um, just because I love that kind of 
I, I, until maybe 10 years ago, I didn't realize that it was not set in the 20s, you know. I, and, and so that's what I want to do down to the credits and everything. I wanted to keep it as authentic to that time period as possible. And so, um, yeah, so John, going back to you, and, and I want to sort of ask this question to everybody. Just talk, and you already addressed this a little bit, but I mean, one thing that I love about seeing these films and seeing the credits is that it's all the same people <laughs> involved in, in every other film and, you know, an actor in Daniel's film, you know, may have worked on your film or your film and, and you know, and vice versa. And uh, so just talk a little bit about uh, shooting in Arkansas, because I think all of these are sort of, you know, Arkansas love projects and um, shooting in Arkansas, the crews and just, I mean, what's most impressive about this and how the film festival, I think, has grown is what you see in terms of the quality of, of film that's happened over the last several years. And talk a little bit about effects as well and how you were able to do all of the things you were able to do. So, uh -oh. so um, yeah, I, I came back, I guess, about yeah, this time last year, maybe a little later. Uh, and the, I, came, I initially came back to work on a documentary for um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and that's how I got involved with Gabe, who I hadn't known before, even though I had lived here. And Gabe kind of helped almost produce the film by finding a lot of the local talent. And that's how Les Galusha got on board, who's a staple of independent film here in Arkansas, um, who did the blood effects on Emmett's feet, which is very convincing. And he did it very quickly, because we didn't have much time, so he's... He's a real treasure of the Arkansas independent film arena. So Gabe was a big help, and so was Chris Crane, in helping find all the people that would work on this project. And you'll see a lot of us um, continue to work together. And actually, after Foot Soldier, I met the Miller brothers and was able to work on their project. And it just kind of became um, a, a, a group of community filmmakers. So that's the most inspiring part of coming back to make films here. And Kristen, obviously, has been working on a lot of films as well, and we all got to meet on that project as well. So um, I think unlike LA, unless you're in a community like film school, but once you graduate, you don't really have that community. So coming here to Arkansas and having a, a group of people that really want to make movies with you is something that's a rare find. And it's, um, I think it's something that Arkansas is, is obviously very proud of, and, and, and rightly so. So I'm very happy to be back. And that's what I always say about the community here is that, you know, the depth chart is, is growing sort of by the year and by the year, and the first string is as good as, as anywhere. You can make a, uh, you know, top quality film, as is obviously apparent here. Uh, uh, so anyway, yeah, you guys go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, I think I owe less $1.2 million for the, <laughs> for the special effects he's done for, for us. But um, no, that's the same. I mean, everybody works together. I feel like it's different everywhere else because in, you know, these places in LA, everyone has, they all have scripts and they all have these projects they want to do. And it's like, well, we don't have money. And we just all work for free. So it works out and everybody helps each other. So um, and tell a little bit about what Les did in your Oh, yeah. Film. Uh, um, Les, all of the driving, everything was green screen. And, um, we were trying to make a deadline for a festival and, and Les was like, yeah, this is going to take, you know, a good three months. And I was like, you think you do that in like 72, 76 hours, something like that? <laughs> and, and, and he did it in, in less than that. So, no, but he is absolutely phenomenal. There are over, how many less? It was 90. 90 yeah. He, he says that in anger towards me, but <laughs> there, there, are, there are 96 special effects in the 11 minute orderly film. Um, and you can't see a single one of them because he's just that talented and amazing. So he, yes. And, and, and Kristen, Kristen um, she produced uh, both of our films and she, um, if you want to produce it, she'll work for free every time. So just talk, to, <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, that's not true. It's a terrible joke. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the talent pool here I mean, it's small, but the people are really, really talented. It's like, I mean, and, and again, I mean, like you said, I think it's really growing fast. And um, with, you know, some of these other things that are going on with Pulaski Tech and, you know, they're starting a program. And um, Steve Taylor's guys who are really helpful on our film. And I know on Daniel's, right? Is that right? 
Um, but anyway, and yeah, and we worked with Les as well. He did all the clouds and um, the feather dropping down. Um, what else did Les do, Miles? He did the, uh, well, the visual effects, creature makeup. With the, uh, with the visual effects, he used, and he told me this, I don't, I don't do this stuff myself, but Photoshop, 3D Studio Max, and uh, After Effects. I had to do a panel in Florida, and he prepped me pretty good for this. But also, we didn't have any actors. Actually, everything you see is green screen and created by Les. Ed Lowry wasn't in our film. Not once. That's a joke. Um, all right, and so, yeah, this is, the, these have all sort of uh, led into larger projects. Everybody here is... Uh, at some stage of, of working on a feature. So tell us a little bit about that and, and uh, how that came about and um, the differences between you know, the short and that. So, um, yeah, so I'm finishing up my degree back in Los Angeles and this film was helpful because it allowed me to kind of go around the country and have people see the film and get a little bit of interest. And I think that's all a short can really do for you is have people come and be your Facebook friend and get a little bit of interest in your films. And uh, through that, I was in the last, in this film I made probably about, yeah, a little bit over a year ago. And so I've been writing a lot since. And I wrote a script called Hard Rabbit, which is kind of a, a throwback to kind of the 70 noir uh, crime dramas. And it's a kind of combination of crying game and American History X, I guess. So <laughs> it's about um, a guy who's, it's, it's just a unique love story, I guess is the best way to put it. But, um, <laughs> And so that's, I've, I was lucky enough to be uh, through the festivals and through the film screenings in touch with a few people uh, back in LA that are, are pushing the script around and, and I guess it's in development, is that how it's said? <laughs> so um, we're hoping that that develops. So, um, and then in, and so with that I'm also doing some other shorts and looking for work if anybody's interested in funding a film. <laughs> I'm currently looking for those people. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it's a long process. Uh, the, my friends who are currently on, in production, it took them quite a while to get there. And so this is the beginning stage. And, um, and I'm actually pretty happy with how quickly the beginning has started. Uh, and I have a few other small projects I'll be coming back here to shoot to keep myself sharp, I guess. So that's where that film is. But Hard Rabbit, if anybody has loads of cash they want to give away. And I think that goes for everybody here, including me. It's just like if you brought like bags of money or gold bars, like we'll go to your car and carry the gold bars. You don't have to carry the gold bars in. So, uh, uh, Daniel, you're you're working on a feature. I hear you brought in a real powerhouse in yeah, terms yeah. of uh, co-writer, uh, co-writer, and I all was, that. I get to uh, write it off people. on uh, for charity. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Um, <laughs> No, I, the first, the, we're not making the, um, the orderly into a feature unless, again, those go bars come up. But um, the, uh, the Antiquities, the first short I did, um, that was at Little Rock's Film Festival last year. Um, I met Graham, Graham and I met, and um, I begged him to, to help me work on that, and we found funding for we're, us to. And we're very much in love. We're very much in love now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, so we're in the process of that. We've uh, we were supposed to have the script done in about four months, and it, ten months later, we're good. That's I, I blame myself. Um, but yeah, so we're in the process of a lot funding. of feats of strength and some <laughs> some NCAA football played in that time. And yeah, exactly. Very productive. But uh, no, so we're in the process of that, and um, we're getting ready to go pitch it to whoever's interested. So see me out. Uh, Miles and I actually had a feature that we had written before we did Pillow, and um, then when we got done with Pillow, we had another idea, so we uh, went ahead and wrote that, and that's the one that we're trying to get made. So um, it's contemporary Southern Gothic piece in the vein of like Frozen River or Monster's Ball, something like that. So, um, I mean, it's set in the winter, and we'd love to shoot in like February, but you know, I mean, the money has to come come together, and if we miss it, then we'll try to shoot. You know, in maybe November or something. But anyway, that's the the plan. We want to shoot in February, though. So loads of money come to us first. 
before Daniel. <laughs> but yeah, um, but also after you know seeing um, but, uh, Take Shelter last night too, and that was an amazing film, definitely. Uh, there's something groundbreaking like that, I think helps pave the way for, for weirdo stories like we're trying to do. <laughs> You're trying to do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, uh, I mean, it sounds like Arkansas has a lot of great stories coming out of it right now, a lot of unique stuff. And, uh, and we're all going for the money right now. <laughs> As, who gets there first? Them. Yeah, we all hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Daniel. <laughs> We like you, John. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, are there any any questions from from you guys? Anybody have have anything to ask? Just just nothing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I would say yes to that. I think, um, I think there's a lot of a lot easier ways to make a living. And so um, I think, yeah, we all definitely have a good time doing it, and we get to meet a lot of interesting people. So, yes, we definitely have been having a lot of fun at this. It was. Les did all of that with the lightning, and, I mean, you could see it move and everything. And, yeah, I mean, we were blown away by what he did with that. Hey, can I ask, what's, what is involved with the transition from a short to a feature film? What exactly takes place? What is, what is different? And, uh, and, and what are the important elements that people should know about? It's, it's, a, it's a lot more work. I know that, I mean, just from the get-go. I mean, with the short, I'm, I don't know about those guys, but we, we wrote the, I wrote the short and then within three months we were shooting and wrapped and ready to go start editing and with a feature I mean we've been writing I know that it's going to be a long grueling process and there are so many more people that have to be involved with, with set design and all this stuff I mean with a short you can you can wing one or two locations yourself but it, when it comes in and script supervisor and all that stuff it's just so tedious the pre-production side of it that uh, you've got to have a good production manager and all that stuff and yeah, it's going to be a, a long process. I think I think it it magnifies it by a million times, you know, from doing a short to a feature. I'm probably not ready for that, but maybe they are. <laughs> I think a million times? <laughs> um, no. I mean, we shot uh, five and a half days, and um, uh, over five and a half days. I mean, it was a pretty good shoot, but, um, I mean, shooting for, you know, 24 days, I'm sure the problems start adding up quick, so... I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I mean, we hadn't shot a feature yet, so we'll find out when the time comes. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we're waiting on the chance. I mean, we're. It, it's harder to get off the ground, definitely, and that's all we know so far. But uh, I mean, we have a lot of progress. I think we all do. You know, uh, we all have great stories. But uh, that's all I have to say about that. Um, and I guess just to follow up on on those comments, I, I think. Um, the, it's really just patience and, and money are the biggest differences. Um, a lot of the same techniques as a director you learn to execute on a short are the same things you're going to do on a feature just with more days. So it's like a marathon instead of a sprint, I would say. Um, and from the films that I've been lucky to work on that are features, there's different ways to do it. You can do it for micro budgets, but um, I, think, I don't think that's the kind of film we're trying to make here. Um, but luckily, because of technology and because of the social equity of the Arkansas you know, community filmmakers and everybody teaming up together. You can make a movie with a DSLR or a lower budget camera and make it look wonderful very quickly. So um, there are films being shot right now in Arkansas, like 45 RPM, I believe, that is a feature being put together for not a huge budget, I don't imagine, and, uh, and they're making it work. So there's lots of different ways to get going, and um, I think it's really just about patience and ideally finding the right people with the right money. and. Uh, and then having a good script. Luckily, we've all had the time and uh, effort put in to write really good property, and uh, we're hoping the story's good enough that it'll, it'll fund itself, so. There was a question over here. Oh, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, we've we've all worked together in one context or another. Yeah, I mean, but we we might you know kill each other. I think all yeah. we all different have we have different styles and different directions that we're trying to go. You know, um, you know, Josh and I are really really good. <laughs> and, uh, so put your money over here, and then Daniel, he's okay. <laughs> but you know, no, I don't. You know, I, Josh and I are a writing team, and. And I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I can't do comedy like he does. Not Daniel. And I don't get. I. I don't. I can't even come close to uh, competing with him. So I don't want to. And John, I. I just. I. I just can't. <laughs> well, I was gonna joke. Me and Miles were gonna joke earlier about uh, Daniel and uh, John being our first and second AD. But I mean, all joking aside, I mean it's like that's how supportive the community is. And I mean, these guys had their own projects that they were working on and took time away from that to help us get our film made. And so, yeah, we've all worked together and we'll continue to do that. And John and I asked them to help us on ours and they said no, so. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. <laughs> I've heard that uh, Direct TV, I believe it is. They're starting a short station, and they're gonna they're gonna preview and, and show shorts on that. I don't know how often they're gonna do it. I don't know if it's gonna be a weekly thing or monthly or whatever. But I think there's, I mean, with with digital cameras and everything, it's it makes it so accessible. I mean, you can you can go out and shoot a short for a fraction of what you used to could, you know. And I think, um, and they're getting better and better. And that's what we were all talking about. You go to some of these festivals, and it's they're phenomenal, you know, how great these things are. And I think that's kind of leading in that direction. I've actually read articles and stuff how, you know, they're, they're starting to try to market a DVD of, you know, five or six shorts and, you know, kind of Netflix it, you know. There used to be a festival called the Genesis Film Festival that was all shorts that toured in art museums and for screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I know, and we've all talked about this as well. It's like, um, I go to a, a, a film festival and I, I try to go to the shorts over the features, you know, because you, you get a variety within an hour and a half, you know. And if you don't like the beginning of that feature, you're done for. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, John brought this up, too, because we all are writing pretty much Southern Gothic right now, and this is the genre that pretty much I want to stay in. I don't know about these guys, but uh, and John had brought up, what about marketing, putting all our shorts on a... a a disc and selling it together, which is a great idea. And there is the uh, HD Shorts channel now and stuff, but you know, yeah, direct TV. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that's a great idea that John pitched to me a while back and it answers your question kind of. But uh, I think, yeah, there's, it's kind of a strange time because shorts are, have become such a, a nice product. Um, and it, it's strange because there's also a culture of free media that's kind of, we have to combat. like. YouTube and Vimeo and, and free sites. So it's a matter of figuring out how to get somebody to pay $1.99 to watch your movie when they can go watch 100 other things on YouTube. So I think it's getting to the point where there will be a cultural shift. And I know there are channels like Hulu's going to start doing shorts, I think. And um, there's other pieces of streaming that I think could be really helpful to short filmmakers for doing that. But I think, yeah, I think it's a really smart idea. I think that is kind of the next step. And we should see things. And it's a good place, I think, to start. Um, thinking about something like that. I think that's a smart idea. If it had a connected narrative, say, two guys in an Arkansas prison, one telling tales, like the spider woman oh. movie, um, to the other that become the film shorts, or so that sure. it felt more like it had a beginning and an ending as a feature and yeah. included your, your unique shorts sure. inside of it. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll have to talk about that more later. And, and they do, yeah, it's kind of like the uh, four, what is it? Four, well, in four, four rooms. rooms. And Jerry Bruno did approach us with an idea like that 
all, actually all, all of us, and was wanting to do something like that. Yeah, and, uh, and it, it is a nice idea. I just don't know if we could ever hit the same page because we're all wanting to do such different things, and it just seems like so time consuming. We're all trying to get our features off the ground, you know, and it's like another short. Yeah, we'll do them, you know, but uh, we, we want to uh, we wanna go forward, really. And then, you know, I would love to do shorts the rest of my life, too, but, I, yeah, you don't make any money, and I don't expect to get rich or famous. I don't think, I don't think Josh or John does either. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll keep doing shorts. I don't, I don't know if we could ever do something like that. Maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm down. I'll say I am in front of you guys. Actually, I think they, they um, there's a distributor that, that buys shorts, and I think they, you can buy them on iTunes for three bucks or something, you know, something like that. So it's, there's definitely, like they were saying, there's definitely a shift towards that, that movement. Uh, how did you guys create the sky cloud and light effect in your short books? Les right behind you, right, right there. Raise your hand, Les. That guy. Less is Mo. That's his dad. Yeah. But, you know, he used, he used the, uh, the three, right, Less? Uh, 3D Studio Max. 3D Studio Max, sorry. Um, After Effects and Photoshop and did multiple layers and layers and layers and spent. It was mainly photography. Yeah. Combining the 3D clouds. Real photography, 3D clouds. God came down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did an amazing job. Um, did an amazing job with the green screen. I didn't know that was a green screen in the order. I mean, it just blows my mind. Really? Um, all right. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thanks everybody for uh, for coming out, and uh, let's give another round of applause for this great film.